we face the greatest Sith in generations. They must be stopped. Welcome back to Retro Rebound, my swoop gang! Today we're talking about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Oh my god, I love these games so much for continuing our celebration of Star Wars in the month of Star Wars. I'm so excited to be here to talk about what I think are the greatest games of all time. No hyperbole. I love these more than I love my own dog who I named Revan. Cute ass dog, by the way. But... Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you may be wondering, where'd you get the Swoop Gang shirt? Where'd you get this beautiful, one moment here, I gotta unwrap it, HK47 t-shirt here. A lot of people ask me about this, I just wanna shout them out, no sponsorship here. Uh, go to Jinx, they made all of these shirts and I bought every single one of their pieces of KOTOR apparel and I'm going to continue to do so until my entire closet is loaded up with KOTOR material. Anyway, if you're new here and you're into nostalgia and retro content, consider subscribing i can't believe it took us we're not even a year into the channel's life until september it took us this long though to actually make a video about kotor i'm kind of proud of myself i've really had to hold myself back we talked about a number of other star wars games but now is the time we strike today let's talk about kotor one so as always in the retro rebound tradition we read the back of the box and then we open it up and go through everything. Choose your path. It is 4,000 years before the Galactic Empire and hundreds of Jedi Knights have fallen in battle against the Ruthless Sith. You are the last hope of the Jedi Order. Can you master the awesome power of the Force on your quest to save the Republic? Or will you fall to the lore of the dark side? Hero or villain, savior or conqueror, you alone will determine the destiny of the galaxy. A brand new Star Wars role-playing experience with unique characters, creatures, vehicles, and planets. Learn to use Force with over 40 different powers and build your own lightsaber build your party and upgrade equipment in your own starship the Evan Hawk choose your party from nine customizable characters including Twi'leks droids and Wookiees I get a kick out of HK being here on Terrace by the way because you cannot unlock them until you get the Tatooine a little bit of a nerd know-how here we'll talk about some other fun facts as we go through this video and last but not least travel to seven enormous worlds including Tatooine and the Sith world of Korriban other fun fact, I mentioned this in our Remembering Star Wars video. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out. But I wanted to let you all know, this character here, the Selkath, yeah, our boy was supposed to be in the game, but he never made it, and they never changed the, the box art, so they shipped it with this character you never really see in the game. I always found that really interesting, because you still see Bastila, HK, T3, you see Malak, but this Selkath here, we don't know, as far as I've looked around and I've researched, not anything at all about this character. Anyway... Let's crack it open, then we will talk about the game. One of my favorite disc arts ever, Malik Bastila, or I like to say Bastila. And we have the thickest manual of all time. A true booklet, an absolute behemoth is in my hands. I'm not even kidding. Look at this beautiful, beautiful manual. Oh, all the art, all the concepts. This was next gen gaming, came out in 2003. There's so many things they go through here because there's really no game like it. They even have the dialogue breakdowns of where the text is going to be, what your choices are going to be, advancing levels, your Jedi classes, which is an important part of the game, all your force powers, all the melee equipment that you're going to see in the game, the credits. And then the LucasArts company store here promoting Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast, Indiana Jones, and the Emperor's Tomb. I love that game, by the way. And Star Wars, the Clone Wars, all for 50 buckaroonies each, plus the strategy guide in the back and then this here is a little bit of a registration slip that they can use for marketing purposes okay so my discovery of this game i shared in our remembering star wars games video but i was in circuit city after saying i wish i had a game that was a choose your own adventure game like the choose your own adventure books and there sitting in the circuit city ten dollar and under section was this game right here i actually should have brought my platinum hits version but me being the purist i am didn't think to because i naturally want to have the black labels because i want to show you all the game that you'd pull off the shelf when it came out back when the year it did release but the platinum hits game that i do have in my own house is my original copy from all those years ago it stayed with me all these years because this game means so much to me it's inspired me to make my own game it's inspired my love for star wars why is that I grew up on the prequels like many of you watching this video have, and I love the prequels. I have such a soft spot in my heart 
for the prequel era. And there was a culture shock to me as a Star Wars fan growing up when I had played and like talked about like a Darth Malak and I'm like, where's your Darth Vader's at though? Isn't that, isn't this Star Wars? And you realize how expansive this universe is and that this is at the birth of the Republic, the birth of the Sith and the difference in looks like the Republic doesn't have the fancy clone trooper armor. In fact, they're these orange and yellow clunky looking things. Same thing for the Sith. You have this metallic silver look to them, not the stormtroopers that I was familiar with. That is the change that really set me for a world. But then it was the ability to go through, pick your own dialogue responses. As you did certain things, you would move down the light or dark side meter, and that would determine how people responded to you, your ending, your physical appearance. Oh my God, this game was like a dream come true. It was Star Wars, something I was falling in love with, and it was the choose your own adventure game that I had looked for my entire life. And there it was, and I replayed this game over and over and over and over. I kind of have like a, a social anxiety, like for loud places. Like, I don't know why it doesn't happen at conventions, but if I was at like a concert or like Halloween, like when it's loud and there's a lot of people around, I feel very uneasy. And I remember uh, there was one Halloween, I was really struggling with that. And I, I remember my parents let me stay in and I played this game and beat it for the first time. Uh, it, it carried me through tough experiences too. Like I remember just being there in the Star Forge and, it's a certain moment I'll talk about. We're going to go into spoiler territory because I got it with this game. Uh, we're going to do that right now, actually. I'm talking about the part three, two, one spoiler mode where you fall in love with Bastila and then you go and fight Darth Malak. And oh man, like that was such a rich, rewarding moment where you're so invested in these characters and Bastila falls to the dark side. And you're like, no, I love Bastila. Please come back to me, please. <laughs> and you can convince her or you could kill her. You could kill her. And I just like, oh my God. Like that moment there is so powerful, but let's wind it back more. What probably defined this game for a lot of you, again, sticking with our spoiler discussion, absolutely has to be the Revenant reveal, right? You're going through this whole game, and if you've played it before and you've played video games for a while, probably won't come as too much of a surprise now, but as you're like rolling around in your sleep and you're having all these visions of Revan, you know, it's, it's funny that when they say you're Revan, you're like, well, of course I am. What? <laughs> what? What do you mean I'm Revan? So much so that I named my dog Revan. But anyway, this moment here, when you're on the Leviathan, and it's the, the way it happens, the timing, it's, it's beautifully done because I remember as a kid, it was like on the cusp of just as you're putting it together in that conversation, like, I'm Revan. I am Revan. Right as you're putting that together, is when Malik says it. I've had this experience personally, friends who I've forced this game upon and many other consumers here on YouTube who have tried it thanks to me have all said like, yeah, like right in that moment, you're just finding it out. You're just putting it together. So they do some type of voodoo magic, something in the force, if you will, that allows them to really hide this plot twist. And I don't know what it is because I, as I go through it again, I'm like, oh man, it's pretty obvious. But that first time through, if I could re-experience any game for the first time, it would absolutely be Star Wars Knights of the World Republic. Of course, there are planets that I adore that I got to experience for the first time and that are my favorite Star Wars planets, like Manan. The music that plays in Manan brings peace to my soul because it's such a contradiction to what's truly happening, right? This is a planet that's neutral. Everyone's fighting for the Bacta, both the Sith and the Republican. They're trying to wage this almost political war where if Manon picks a side, then that is going to change the tide of the battle. And they're very much trying to remain neutral. We're not getting involved. We're not doing this at all. And you are this chaotic force through it all where I felt the true impact of my choices. Now, I mentioned in my Chrono Trigger video that I had never played a game with like trials in them and that my introduction to that was really with KOTOR. KOTOR, where you're on trial in Manon, like that to me was a peak moment in that game where I had to like defend myself and I got caught in the fail state as a kid where I was like, oh man, how do I get past this? I remember getting locked in that and I didn't know what I had to say until I eventually found out the direct path through because I had to look it up on Game Facts. But Man, this this moment here was also amazing. But the reason I say the music is such a contradiction is because it's very peaceful and easy. And then you go beneath the surface underwater and you see the cell cat losing their dang minds. And it's scary. I love scary Star Wars, if you couldn't tell. If you've watched my Remembering Star Wars video, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's 
It's intimidating. These cell cats are losing their minds and they're attacking you. And when you find out why they are and the choice you gotta make that's gonna sway the war one way or another, oh man, oh man, powerful stuff. And then there's that moment right towards the end of the game when you get on the lost planet. I f I'm actually forgetting the name of it. But this is a moment where if you're on the dark side, oh, the havoc you can wreak on your group is unlike anything else. You can force Zalbar. You can force this man because he swore a life debt to you in the beginning of the game to kill Mission. Mission Veo, great character, but see you later. Wow, like that moment there, I felt so bad. And everyone's like, how'd you do that? You just, everyone starts fighting and killing each other. It's, it's incredible that it can actually occur that way. It really is. What a, a wonderfully uplifting game. A, a great introduction point to Star Wars, thanks to like Korriban and learning more about like the OG Sith Lords. Such an amazing time period for a Star Wars game. The combat, hit or miss for a lot of people. Uh, myself included to some extent. I usually go the Soldier Jedi Guardian build because through the first two planets of the game, you're really defining what your build's gonna be. First, it's the class that you choose, like the Scoundrel Scout or the uh, the soldier. And I always went soldier because it means that your combat rolls are a bit higher, so you don't have to whiff a ton of times and you're much stronger, you can take more damage. And then you go Jedi Guardian, that pretty much seals the deal. Like you're never gonna miss an attack again. Your master flurries, your master power attacks, your master critical strikes, they'll do everything you want them to do. It's no problem whatsoever. So really I ended up focusing on like skills such as treat injury, security, those types of things, persuasion of course. And then um, I would go into the the powers and I would use like all of the great dark side powers. I love the dark side powers like death field when you lift up your hand and it's this pink energy that just spreads across the entire battlefield. You siphon health from everybody. Oh my gosh, love that stuff. And when you have equipment that like restricts your force power usage, like you can really armor up, but if you do, you're not gonna be able to use that force heal that you really need. So such a difference maker there. Great tactical elements packed within this game. Love it to death. Combat's definitely not the superstar, though. I'm not going to sell you like it is, but it's one that still I find enjoyment in. Overall, though, the character arcs. HK47, right? I got the shirt here representing my boy. Haven't even talked about the mad lad himself, HK. Oh, the wisecracker. The amazing lines of dialogue that this man has packed within him is unreal. I love this character so much. There's no character like HK, right? As much as I love Bastila, Karth, all of them, you can't find a character like HK anywhere who goes like, Statement! Query! Statement! Indeed! It is possible! The closest we got was Sam in the Outer Worlds kind of had that vibe, but otherwise, like, just no one can go near HK because HK is such a specific speaking style in a video game that just, you, you, if you replicate it, you're directly copying it. Love it though. Love, 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 love HK so much. All right, let's move into the sequel or we'll be here all day. KOTOR 2, the sequel to the 2003 game of the year, KOTOR 2, The Sith Lords. Now, the first game came in 2003, as it mentions, from BioWare. Then you'd think the sequel would be by BioWare. It was not the sequel, it was by Obsidian. One year later, they made this amazing video game in one year. Okay, so it says on the back, this time your choices affect everyone around you. And that is true. Spoiler mode on, we will be getting into why that's the case. It is a time of darkness. Five years after the event of the award-winning KOTOR, the Sith Lords have hunted the Jedi Order to the edge of extinction. And a lone Jedi Knight remains, which is you. As you struggle to reconnect with the Force, your decisions will lead you to the light or dark side and will affect everyone around you. The fate of the galaxy rests in your hands. Unleash all new Force powers, feats, and weapons as you battle the evil Sith. Create your Jedi Knight and build your party from up to 10 characters, and the decisions you make will influence you and your companions to the light or dark side of the Force. So yeah, spoiler mode on. In just a mere moment, we have Atris, we have Nihilus, we have the manual here, another thick one, very much in the same style that you saw with the first game. There's Visus holding, for some reason, two blaster pistols when she uses lightsabers. I don't really know about that one, Obsidian. Aten Rand, amazing character, love him dearly, but very much like what we saw for the first KOTOR with a, with a promotion 
for Republic Commando. This was such a good era of Star Wars game. Look at the last three years you had, right? You had KOTOR 1, you had KOTOR 2, and then you had Republic Commando come out right after that. Like, absolutely insane, back to back to back. And that's not including these bad boys right here that were also coming out. Just, oh, I'm sick to my stomach. It was so good. Like, why can't we have that back? All right. So I mentioned spoiler mode on for KOTOR. It says here on the back, you can influence your companions to the light or dark side. Absolutely my favorite part of this game is the influence meter. The fact that you can turn Atten to a dark side Jedi because he was a Jedi hunter and bring him back to that place is so incredible because then he starts to get the veins in his eyes, right? And just like everyone else, they have this connection to the force. And it's because it's trying to create a gameplay reason to explain story choices where when you make a dark side choice and everyone attacks, even though they have vocally disagreed with you, they're like, why did I do that? Like there's a specific moment in KOTOR 2 where Atten leaps into combat with you. And when he does, even though you've made an evil choice, he goes, why did I do that? I, I didn't have, it's almost like I didn't have a say over my body there. And you find out that Mitra Surik, the, the canon name for your main character, you find out that she is this siphon to the force. She has created a void and she was kicked out of the Jedi Order because of that. And it's this moment of like, whoa, I am the only savior, but I'm also a danger to the Republic. And it's this moment of when you find all these last Jedi that are spread throughout the galaxy on the likes of Nar Shaddaa and Telos, and you're sifting through all these planets, digging up all these places where they may be in, in case in some cases finding some of them dead which especially in Korriban when you find one dead in a bloody cage I was like oh my god even to this day that hits a little different it paints a very bleak image for the future of the old republic and how it was on a downward spiral and how the Sith were winning and what's interesting is you spend the whole game hearing how Revan's out there because while you're facing Darth Sion, you're facing Darth Nihilus, these very much scary threats as the Sith presence is encroaching, guess where Revan is? Fighting something that's said to be even greater. And that to me, when you read the book called Revan from Drew Karpishin, who wrote the first Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic game, and you learn what that actual force is. That is the KOTOR 3 for many of us out there. It's that moment of like, whoa. Whoa, he was fighting. He was fighting some serious battles out there. And with KOTOR 2, it, it paints this image of like, you got to think about when you're in that time capsule, right? You don't know about that book from Drew Carpish and you're like, where's Revan? Is Revan going to show up? Revan never shows up. And you're just out on your own. That leads to a cliffhanger ending after Kreia betrays you and reveals herself as Darth Treya. I'm not crazy about this ending because it leaves a lot open, but that was created under the assumption that you went back to back here that around 2006 was supposed to be KOTOR 3 on the Xbox 360 and the game got canceled. Much to my dismay, if you followed me over on Mr. Matty Plays, you know I've made a stack of KOTOR videos begging for this game to come back. Whether it be remasters, remakes, ports, sequels, don't care, find a way, make it happen. Thank God for Aspire, because they clearly have a passion for Star Wars at that studio. They have ported almost every OG Star Wars game I can think of outside of like the original Battlefronts and a couple of others, but they have ported every meaningful Star Wars game that I and many of you out there grew up with. And I think if it wasn't for them and that passion there, we wouldn't be getting the remake here today from them. And I trust them immensely with this. But KOTOR 2, I mentioned it's bleak. One of those moments that really seeped in as a kid, another scary Star Wars story, you're on the Paragus Mining Facility. It is a isolated experience. Someone's crawling through this entire facility, and you don't know who, but all the miners are dead and gone. There's droids everywhere. Why are the mining droids attacking people? I remember hearing the, the audio files for, I think his name was Kortra? I believe was the name. I'm forgetting it, but it was one of the HK droids. You could hear the audio files on Paragus 4 and he incinerates him and you hear him screaming bloody murder and you're like, what transpired here? And you don't have a party with you. You're fighting on your own. A lot of people hate Paragus. I love it though, because it sets the tone for the whole game. And once you finish Paragus and you see this Republic starship start floating in, you're like, oh, help has arrived. Okay, the next part of the story is here. You board it no one is there it is empty it is dark and you find this cracked glass that darth scion was in previously 
he broke through, and you realize in this new file you read, he's gone. And he might be skulking about. And then you start getting ambushed by Sith troopers who are camouflaged. It is this moment of pure vulnerability and dread in Star Wars that has never happened ever again in, as far as I'm concerned. And the whole game, again, with the Jedi being scarce to find and everyone's dead and you know the universe is in such a screwed position, it is a terrifying experience. And maybe I feel that way because it is a game series I'm very invested in, but I do consider KOTOR 2 in a way like a very dreadful video game. And it's why I love it so much, because it's very powerful. I also love it because on PC, it's in its best state. You can play it in 4K, you can use controller support, there's Steam mod support, there's achievements on there. You got all the good stuff on there. So, absolutely worth your time playing there. KOTOR 1, a little bit more difficult to run over on the good old Steam. I would recommend modding that one heavily, but they don't have the official tools, sadly. The thing that stunk about KOTOR 2 is this is a game that again came out one year after the first KOTOR so it was kind of annoying when you went in there and you found pretty much the same combat but the storytelling and the atmosphere I think more than make up for it and if you're like me and you can just tolerate the KOTOR combat and in some cases enjoy it like I do think it's solid uh, you can definitely get into this one and the music oh my god like when you're on Onderon and you're in the palace and you're marching through taking everyone out and they're playing I think it's uh, March of the Clones it's like bum. And you're just trudging through and the music just keeps rolling. It's you're cutting everyone up. It's a real power fantasy. The other thing that a lot of people have trouble with KOTOR 2, and I totally get this one, is making your lightsaber. Now, if you are aware of the pitfalls in the game, it is easy to get your lightsaber within the first planet or two. However, not many people know that. So in my first playthrough of KOTOR 2, I'm running around still with the Vibro Sword. I'm like, whoa, I got a cool blade here. Nice, but where's my lightsaber at? Whereas in KOTOR 1, they're like Dantooine, you'd go through Jedi training, and they grant you your first lightsaber, and then you customize it with support crystals. That type of stuff is great because you know you get your lightsaber at a certain point in time. However, with KOTOR 2, part of the journey is building it. And I think it adds to the story, but in subsequent replays, it can hurt the game a little bit. Favorite planet. I talked about my favorite planet for KOTOR 1 was Manan. Favorite planet for KOTOR 2. It's a toss up, man. I love Nar Shaddaa, but I got to give it to Duxin. I know Duxin's a part of Onderon. You're going to Onderon. You crash on Duxin, the moon planet, and the, the, the rain, the, the Mandalorians, the whole vibe. Meeting Candorus again was such an awesome moment because you know as the player, like I know that voice. I know that voice, but no one else knows that voice. Mm, mm, mm. And this game lets you do some messed up things, by the way. This is on Nar Shaddaa, and it's why I kind of have like a, I go back and forth on it. So on Nar Shaddaa, there's a point in the game. <laughs> this is going to sound messed up because I find it amazing, but it's amazing because you can make this choice. There's someone sick in the, the dock section in, in the lower part of the Nar Shaddaa planet. And you can go in there. And if you talk to them, you can use your tree injury skill. You can help them out. You can give them an item. You can heal them. You can persuade them to do something. And then there's a little skill check you can do. And you can tell this sad fella in the corner that, hey, your life's not worth living anymore. Go kill yourself. And he will actually do it. And it's this moment of like, wow, Obsidian was just having fun here at this point. I know it's a, a sick thing to say they were having fun with this, but they were like, Let's make this choice here where you can tell them to kill themselves. And I just find it amazing that they supported that level of role playing. Like, you're not just dark side, like, hmm, the force choke. Ah, it's like you can get some dude to kill himself. And I just thought that level of it being so messed up fit with the dark nature of the game. All in all, the, the influence, the, the seeking out parts for your lightsaber, and of course for HK. Uh, the journey you go on, the characters you recruit, at and Vesis. I love Vesis so much. All these characters are incredible. Is it Vesis or Vices? Someone will have to correct me. It's been a while since I've replayed KOTOR 2. But I've replayed KOTOR 1 almost every year. So I love these games so much. Please, if you have not, play these games. They are so worth your time. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got to say about my favorite video games of all time. Take care of yourselves. Let me know what you thought about this and the games in the comments down below. And peace out.